Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am very happy to show you that I've got my hands on my very own Mac Studio and today I'm going to be testing out five games running on Apple's brand new M1 Ultra chip. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing. It only takes a moment to do and it really helps to support this channel and the work that I do. So the chip that we're going to be testing today is the M1 Ultra. And if you watch Apple's announcement, you'll know that the M1 Ultra is composed of two M1 Max chips, which have been fused together. And basically we're able to access the power of both chips at the same time. So the M1 Ultra has 20 CPU cores and it can have between 48 and 64 GPU cores, which which is double that of the M1 Max chip. So today we're going to be testing out the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip with 48 GPU cores. So this is going to be the base tier of the M1 Ultra. So the first game that we're going to be testing is that old favorite Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which remains one of the best AAA titles on the Mac operating system. And this runs great on even the original M1 chip. This is despite the fact that this is still an Intel coded game and therefore it's using the Rosetta 2 translation layer in order to work on the ARM architecture. It performs well because it's been optimized for Apple's Metal Graphics API and performance feels good throughout. So for example, in this single player area here, we're getting around 100, 110 FPS, which is to be expected. Running the actual benchmark tool, we can actually see that the average FPS is 96, running at the highest graphics preset, which is certainly the highest that I've ever got from any Mac that I've run so far. So next up is another AAA macOS title, Metro Exodus, which I'm running on the Ultra preset at 1080p. So this is still one of the best looking games that you can run on a Mac, and it still performs very well on the M1 Ultra. So in the single player section here, we're running at 70 FPS. And in this combat section with a lot of dynamic lighting and action, we're maintaining around 50 to 55 FPS. So this game has a lot of mixture of environments which are indoors and also outdoors as well. And so the hardware that you run the game on needs to be able to cope with everything the game throws at it. And I can definitely say that the M1 Ultra is definitely handling this game very well. So next up is the classic multiplayer shooter, Counter-Strike GO. So here I'm running at 1080p and I've turned all of the settings down to the lowest possible. That's because CSGO players don't really care about graphical quality, they just want as high a frame rate as possible. So the problem with the Mac port of CSGO is that it uses the ancient graphical API, OpenGL, which has actually been deprecated from recent versions of Mac OS. So therefore the hardware needs to kind of brute force past the unoptimized code. But thankfully the M1 Ultra is able to get around 100 to 120 FPS in this game. And this is despite all of the unoptimized code that it has to overcome. So next up is the game Civilization VI. So this is finally a game which I think realistically people will actually play on a Mac Studio. This isn't a competitive online shooter. It's a deep, slow moving strategy game, which a lot of casual fans want to be able to play once in a while on their Macs. So here we're still in a relatively early portion of the map. However, we're getting around 100 FPS. And also I can definitely say that the turn times are pretty good, especially at this stage of the game. And this game performs very well. Once I have more time, I'll try and test the late game, which can be more demanding on other computers. So the last game I'm testing is GTA 5, and this is a Windows game running through the Crossover 21.2 beta. Now, for some reason, this game is actually running slower than it did on the M1 Max, and I'm still trying to determine exactly why that is. I've actually run multiple benchmarks and we should be getting at least 120, 130 FPS in this section, at least we do on the M1 Max. And so this is a bit of a conundrum because in theory, the M1 Ultra has a lot more GPU cores and we should be getting much better performance here. So if any other M1 Ultra users also run the same GTA 5 benchmark and also get a similar result, then please make sure to leave a comment. So this brings us to the end of our tests. And I do think that after playing all of these games on the M1 Ultra, the actual results are a little bit underwhelming. So in a previous video, I also compared the benchmarks for Shadow of the Tomb Raider between the original M1 chip, the M1 Pro, and also the M1 Max chip, all of which have different GPU core counts. And basically the conclusion of that experiment was that the more GPU cores that you have, the faster the game will perform. However, we do start getting into diminishing returns. So the M1 Max chip was definitely the fastest of that bunch. However, not necessarily sure it was the most worthwhile to buy. 
Similarly, this edition of the M1 Ultra is definitely the fastest that I've used so far. However, it comes at such a high price point that I've really struggled to see whether it's going to be worthwhile, especially as the performance gains are fairly minimal, especially considering how much you're going to be paying for that performance gain. So if you're starting off gaming on the original M1 chip and you're running a game like Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 20 FPS, and if you switch to the M1 Pro and start getting 45 FPS, then that's a substantial jump in performance. And that that might be worthwhile. However, when you start going up the line, when you get to the M1 Max and then the M1 Ultra, you're gonna be paying far more money for a less and less noticeable gain. And this is especially true if you compare the gaming performance between the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra, you're gonna be paying double the price for the M1 Ultra and you're only gonna be getting marginally noticeable gains. So for everyone that's considering buying a Mac Studio and getting the M1 Ultra chip, what I definitely think about doing is actually going down to the M1 max and use the money that you save in investing in a gaming pc or a console or even something modest like this so a Steam Deck is around four or $500, depending on which model that you buy. And this is gonna be able to play games far more reliably and probably faster as well than most Apple Silicon hardware. So definitely think about this. So I've just received my Steam Deck and I'm gonna be doing a bunch of videos and testing on this. So if you'd like to keep up to date, then please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want me to do any specific game testing for the M1 Ultra, then please make sure to leave a comment. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.